Hello everyone, today on Jaden Pokemon we have a brand new Steam Deck tutorial. I've had the Steam Deck for about a year now and I love the device, but it can be tricky to figure out how to get certain things working with its software if you've only ever used Windows. It can be like speaking another language even. This video will show you how you can get Transformers War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron running on the Steam Deck. Um, which I've been trying to figure out for a while myself, but I finally figured it out. Now I'm going to make a video on it so it's readily available. Um, the reason getting games working on the Steam Deck can be difficult is because it uses Valve's really great operating system SteamOS. SteamOS is a version of Linux, which if you aren't familiar, is an operating system that is open source and really useful. However, most PC games are designed for Windows, and since Linux and Windows work differently under the hood, games designed for Windows won't work natively on Linux, and since SteamOS is a version of Linux, Obviously, we need to do some configuring to make it work right. Valve has created something called Proton, which is a compatibility layer for the Steam Deck and other Linux systems. Basically, this will create a pseudo Windows environment for games to use. I have linked in the description a really great video by Monroe World. Make sure to subscribe to him as he makes great content and really great videos, and he's been doing it for a long time. And from the few times I've interacted with him, he seems like a nice guy, and he's been very helpful. I'll have that linked in the description. And that video breaks down what Proton is, kind of the file structure of it, how it works. And also it goes into Wine and just kind of how different things work, what a compatibility layer is. But basically what it is, is it's a faux Windows environment. So it makes the game think it's operating in Windows, when in reality it's running on SteamOS in this case. Uh, and he explains, the, he explains that very well in that video, better than I ever could. Okay, so I'm going to be going on this, assuming you have a basic understanding of how this works. Uh, so we're going to be using something called Lutris to help us install War for Cybertron or Fall of Cybertron. It's the exact same process for both. Uh, the, um, so Lutris is just a front-end manager for compatibility layers like, like Proton, like Wine. Uh, and it just makes it easy for people to add non-Steam games to Steam using Wine and stuff. It's very, very simple, very, very helpful. And I'm gonna break it down for you very easily and it's gonna work out great. Okay, so let's get into it. The first step from gaming mode, which is like kind of the default, what you load into if you turn your Steam Deck on, you're going to want to hit the Steam button, excuse me, scroll all the way down to power, and then go all the way down to switch to desktop and press that. Okay, here you are. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to install Lutris to begin. So go down here to the Discover Store. And then you're going to want to go up here. If you don't know how to bring the keyboard up, uh, you go to Steam. And you, you press this, hold the Steam button and press X to bring it up. So you're going to want to go to All Applications. And you're going to want to search... Uh, for L-U-T-R-I-S, Lutris, and there it is right there, and click on it, and then up here it's going to say install, I already have it installed so you're not going to see that on mine, but it's going to say install up here, so go up here, search, click all applications, search Lutris, click on it, install it, so then you can close out of this, um, well, actually, you would still need to go in there. So go to your installed programs, which is going to be down here, installed. It's going to be in that list. And then once you have it running, I recommend you pin it to your taskbar down here. And you can do that just by left, uh, left clicking on it on the Steam Deck. See, unpin, I already have it pinned. So open up Lutris. And then you're going to look, see in the top left here, we have this plus icon. You're going to want to click on that. Yours may be in light mode by default. Um, to change that, it's just in the settings somewhere. I'm sure you can find it. So you're going to want to do add a locally installed game. Okay, and for name, you can name it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. But for me, I'm going to name it, obviously, War for Cybertron. Because I'm going to do Transformers War for Cybertron in this video. And again, it's the same process for Fall of Cybertron and War for Cybertron. Um... Do it however you want. 
Uh, it's the same thing. I have to censor that because for some reason it's telling you my internet, which is just lovely. Thank you so much. Okay, there we go. And now what we're going to want to do is go into Game Options. So now that you have your name, go to Game Options. Oh, I'm sorry. You actually have to select a runner first. So go down here underneath Name, Runner. Select a runner from the list and go down here and select Wine Runs Windows Games. So pick that. So you have your name you just put in and then you have your runner that you selected. Go to Game Options. And now you're able to pick your executable. So this is just the game, just the game, basically. So click these little three dots right here. That'll bring up a file manager or a file browser. So go to desktop, wherever you have the game. Then you're going to go to, um, why is it not there? It's interesting. Oh, here it is right here. Sorry, I missed it. And then Steam Apps. Common Morph Cybertron, and then Binaries, and then uh, TWFC.exe, click OK. Now you have that selected, you can just hit Save. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create the prefix, the wine prefix for our game. So go ahead and exit out of this, go ahead and exit out of Lutris, go to your game, so I have it right here. And then go to Steam Apps, Common, Transformers War for Cybertron. And in here, so you see you have your binaries folder, which has your EXE in it. You're not going to put it in there. You're going to put it in here. So you're going to put it in War for Cybertron, Transformers War for Cybertron. And you're going to create new folder. And you're just going to name this Prefix. Okay, so just lowercase P-R-E-F-I-X. Put it in there. And don't put anything in it. Don't change anything in it. Just put it in there in the same folder that has your binaries folder. So you can go ahead and close out of that. Go back into Lutris. Okay, and then you're going to want to right-click on that. Configure. Game options. And then wine prefix down here. Go and hit the three dots again. It's going to bring you to a different kind of file browser. Go to desktop. You're going to want to hit the little arrow to go down. Transform with War for Cybertron. Steam Apps. Common War for Cybertron. And then Prefix that we just went ahead and made. Okay, I'll, I'll let you see the, the, the file path for just a second. All right. Then you hit select it and hit OK. Then you save this. Now we're almost done. Last thing we need to do is we need to select the game. So just uh, click on it. So highlight it blue and come down here. See this little wine glass next to that. You're going to click that arrow and all the way at the top. You're going to click wine tricks. So it's going to say it's updating something. That's totally normal. Just let it do its thing. Okay. And in a minute or not in a minute, but in a second, something will pop up down here. So there we go. And so now we have wine tricks showing up. And you're what's gonna wanna, it's not gonna pop up on the screen. You're gonna have to go down to your taskbar and actually click on it to bring it out. So select the default wine prefix. It should already be highlighted by default, but if it isn't, go ahead and click on that and then click OK. And it's gonna open another one down here. You're gonna have to click on it again. So install a Windows DLL or component. Click OK. It's going to take a second. It's going to pop up again. Okay. So now we have a list of packages here. So what we're going to want to do, and pack, all this stuff is, it's just like little, you know, run times and everything, every little thing that a game might need to run. So all different kinds of stuff. Some of these are, you know, they got all different sorts of stuff in here. So what you're going to do is scroll down to the P section. It's in alphabetical order. So scroll down to the P section.
I think I went past it. I went past it, didn't I? Okay, yeah, I went past it. So here we go. Uh, Phys X right here. P eight or uh, P H Y S X. It's in the P section, alphabetical order. There we go. Just click the check mark on that. Make sure it's clicked, and then click OK. And that's going to take a second. You might get some warning pop-ups down here. So what does it say? Using a 64-bit wine prefix. You don't really need to worry about that stuff. What does this say? Uh, it's not a regular... Yeah, don't, don't worry about any of that stuff. And they'll go away on their own. And then eventually, here in just a second, you should see uh, this pop-up again down in your taskbar. Uh, and then just exit out of this because it's just this just brings you back to the original menu. So just exit out of this. And at this point, your game should run. So go ahead and double click on your game here. And yep, looks like we did it right. Awesome. So at this point, the splash screen with Optimus should show up and he should load into the game momentarily. So it might look a little glitchy for just a second, but here we are. We're in the game. So. There's a couple different little things I want to mention. To get this to go into Steam, what you're going to want to do, so like if you just boot your Steam Deck into gaming mode, you can have that in there. The way you're going to want to do that is you're going to want to, uh, you're going to want to, on the Steam Deck, it'd be left click on that. On your desktop, it would be a right click. On your Steam Deck, it'd be a left click. So left click on that, and then go back into the game options menu that we were in there earlier. Um, or the drop down menu that lets you go into game options and then down that drop down menu you should see like add to steam or something click on that and then exit out of Lutris, restart steam and it should be in there and then you can play it from from there so here we go we're in the game um really really awesome very straightforward and easy to do now uh, the reason i recorded this the way i, I could have used obs to do this but I figured this would be better, that way you could actually see kind of what I'm doing, you know, like physically. I don't know. I thought it would be better to do it this way. Um, so yeah. Uh, th there's a couple of other things I want to mention. Uh, first of all, if you want to, if you have any questions, something that doesn't work, or you have any problems or anything like that, go ahead and message me. Either just, you know, post a comment, or join my Discord server, which I'll have linked in a pinned comment and I'll have it linked in the description with uh, Monroe's world video that I have that I suggested you watch um, so yeah I hope you guys this works for you um, but yeah if you have any questions or concerns something doesn't work you can't figure it out make sure to message me somehow my username on discord is mr. house um, a couple other things so first of all this is going to be running at 30 FPS because by default War for Cybertron is locked to 30 FPS, unfortunately. There is a way to fix that. On, on a Windows machine, you can just use the um, the FPS unlocker and the FOV tool, just like that, and it works great. You can still do that on the Steam Deck. You can still use it. But since that's made for Windows, you need to do some other things with it. And I'll have linked in the description the Reddit post that kind of showed me how generally to get that working but i did have to change some stuff up so if you want to use the fps tool for this game to unlock it i'll make a video tutorial about that later um but yeah that's going to come at a later date because that's kind of a little bit tricky to do but i'll leave a link to the reddit post that kind of showed me how to do that originally it's not that hard uh it's just takes a little bit of know-how so here we are we're in the main menu accept solo campaign <clears throat> medium okay uh, we'll just do defend icon so there we go we're loading into the game I'll turn the volume up icon the capital city of the Autobots is crumbling under the onslaught of Megatron and his Decepticons rumors have spread there you go you can see all the cutscenes work great uh, if you want to skip the cutscenes, I don't think there's a way to do it. I think you just have to literally delete the cutscenes, which kind of sucks. I haven't figured out a way to do it. If, there, if you know a way to do it, let me know. But if you want to skip the cutscenes, just delete them from their folders in the game. Uh, I, I believe there's a specific folder for them. So just go in there and delete all the cutscenes if you want to do it that way. Here we go, opening cutscene. They actually look pretty good on the Steam Deck because they're 720p and the Steam Deck is 720p. Or not, it isn't, but it's 
just above 720p. <clears throat> so you still have these black bars at the top and bottom, but that's just the way it looks on some games. Once you get into the actual gameplay, though, it'll be full screen, so don't need to worry about that. Because the cutscenes are 16 by 9 but the actual <clears throat> game can render any resolution. So. Or any aspect ratio, I mean. Almost into gameplay here. Shouldn't be too much longer. I just figured I'd let you, you know, see, obviously, that's working. And, yeah. There you go, it looks great. Game plays really well. You know, once you have the FPS on locker, which I'll show you how to do, it's 60 FPS, flawless. Or if you're on the OLED Steam Deck, 90 FPS, flawless. It runs really, really well. And also, if you want, you can turn off motion blur, and the Cola said. Because the to use the 4K Cola said, or to use the 4K Cola said with the DLCs for Fall of Cybertron, the exact same thing. It, it's no, no different at all. You just put them in the respective locations. I have a video tutorial on that. Exact same thing on Linux and on Steam Deck. Okay, so we're, we're in the actual game here. And as you can see, it is 30 FPS. Uh, I will make a video in the future showing you how to fix that, but it's totally playable at 30. And Fall of Cybertron, if you want to do that game, will be 60 FPS. So yeah, there you go. Um, really, really great. It plays great, full screen. Plays at native resolution automatically, you know, all that stuff. So, <clears throat> here we go. So, yeah, I hope this video was helpful, um, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Bye.